Archaeological discoveries offer valuable insights into the past, shedding light on the lives and cultures that preceded ours. A remarkable discovery doesn't need to be thousands of years old to be breathtaking, though. A century or two will do. These finds from around the world will leave you amazed. Enjoy this compilation of awe-inspiring archaeological discoveries. A remarkable discovery was made at The Star, a pub in Hoddesdon, Hertfordshire, England, during the restoration of the building in 2021. The inn was once owned by Elizabeth I's confidant, William Cecil, also known as Lord Burley, and Cecil himself is believed to be depicted on the five wall panels depicting figures from the Elizabethan era uncovered during the restoration. Experts believe that one of the figures in the painting might be the Queen, although this can't be definitively stated. The panels, which show figures dressed in their finest clothing, were most likely commissioned by William Cecil shortly after he purchased the inn in 1580. Experts have described the find as incredibly rare, and stated that they have local and national significance. Despite being over 500 years old, the paintings have survived many alterations over the centuries and were preserved as part of the pub. The building, which is Grade II listed, boasts architectural features dating back to the mid-1400s, including roof beams that suggest the building might once have been a medieval open hall. Who's to say that Queen Elizabeth herself never enjoyed a drink here? Here's another 2021 discovery which was made at the National Library in Prague's Clementinum and has the potential to reshape our understanding of 13th and 14th century music in Bohemia. A document was uncovered containing fragments of six two-voice musical compositions believed to have been composed by the Notre Dame School in Paris. The manuscript was discovered bound into a book from the 1430s, which is a copy of an earlier work on agronomic systems by Petrus de Crescentis. It is thought to have been written on parchment, which was then bound into a 15th century manuscript. The discovery was made by Dominique Gatta, a researcher from Strasbourg in France, who systematically follows all newly digitalized medieval manuscripts and their musical parts. The manuscript's significance lies in its unique content and its relationship to bohemian musical history. It is one of only four fragments of the Notre Dame school that has been conserved in Europe, and researchers hope to use it to redefine the history of medieval-era music in the Kingdom of Bohemia. The compositions themselves are already known, but the discovery will provide further insights into the practices of music production and the ways in which melody was altered in different manuscripts. Medieval English royalty enjoyed exotic delicacies, including whale meat, as a symbol of power and status. This is evident from the discovery of a rare medieval whale bone that has gone on display at Launceston Castle in Cornwall. The bone, measuring more than a foot across, was one of around 20 broken vertebra, rib sections, and small pieces of bone discovered during excavations at the castle in 2022. Concentrated near the kitchen area, the bones reveal the unusual diet of the castle's medieval inhabitants. According to English heritage, Medieval whalers were unlikely to have caught a whale of this size, suggesting the bones came from a beached whale. As such, this would have been a delicacy that was born from convenience rather than by design. The discovery is significant in shedding light on the luxurious past of castle life, which was often marked by extravagant feasts attended by high-ranking officials. This particular bone dates to the 13th century, during which time the castle was owned by Richard, Earl of Cornwall, and brother to King Henry III. During his lifetime, he was one of the richest men in Europe. In a startling discovery made in 2019, the remains of a 16th century cargo vessel were found beneath a popular park in the heart of Stockholm, Sweden. The probable remnants of the Samson, a ship commissioned by Charles IX of Sweden, were uncovered by marine archaeologists in Kungstradgarden Park, which now serves as a bustling hub of the city with no substantial bodies of water. However, in the mid-18th century, the area was underwater, providing a route for ships to dock on Stockholm's coast. 
The discovery of the shipwreck could help shed light on the mystery surrounding the Samson's disappearance in 1607, a few years after its construction, if it is indeed the correct ship. The vessel's unique construction, a hybrid of both transport and warship design with a small cavalry of naval guns, makes both likely to be the Samson, but also an exciting find for marine archaeologists, even if it isn't. The ship's remains were buried under more than two centuries of trash and debris before being unearthed during construction on a nearby building. Marine archaeologists from the Swedish National Maritime and Transport Museums led the excavation and revealed the significant find to the public. Archaeologists have uncovered a so-called vampire burial in a 5th century Italian cemetery in Lugnano, where the remains of a 10-year-old child infected with malaria were found with a stone shoved in its mouth. The practice is believed to have been carried out to prevent the child from returning from the dead and spreading the disease. David Soren, an archaeologist from the University of Arizona, said the discovery was extremely eerie and weird and suggested the vampire of Lugnano was buried to prevent the spread of the disease, which devastated the region during the 5th century. The child's remains were among those of dozens of infants, toddlers, and unborn fetuses that were found in the Cemetery of Children, alongside evidence of witchcraft, including raven talons, toad bones, and bronze cauldrons. The remains of the 10-year-old were discovered on its side, and were initially thought to be those of an infant. The unique burial has highlighted the significance of the Lugnano Cemetery, according to excavation director David Pickle. It also highlights the measures that the terrified people of the era went to in an effort to prevent the spread of the illness through any means necessary. Speaking of weird burials, archaeologists working at an Anglo-Saxon cemetery in Cambridgeshire, England, made an incredibly unique and bizarre discovery in 2012. The remains of a woman were found buried alongside those of a cow, which is a highly unusual animal to be included in a grave of this type. The discovery was made by students from Manchester Metropolitan University during the excavation of the Oakington site. According to Dr. Duncan Sayer, co-director of the excavation, this is the first time an animal has been found buried with a woman from this period. Moreover, a cow is an unusual animal to be buried with someone. Dr. Sayer noted that animal burials are already extremely rare, with only 31 horse burials in Britain, and they were all with men. This woman, who lived in the late 5th century, was clearly a matriarchal figure, buried with grave goods indicating her high status, such as brooches, hundreds of amber and decorated glass beads, and even a complete Chatelaine set. Giving up a cow would have been a big decision, as it was a valuable source of food, so it was likely intended as a gesture of enormous respect. Pontefract Castle, a ruin in Wakefield, England, is steeped in over 500 years of English royal history. Once a Norman structure, the castle played a crucial role in some of the country's most bitter conflicts. King Edward I himself described it as the key to the north. The castle has had plenty of moments of infamy, including the imprisonment and assassination of Richard II in 1399, during Henry IV's reign, and being surrendered to the pilgrimage of Grace rebels. It was also a location of the liaisons between Henry's fifth queen and Thomas Culpepper. During the English Civil War, Pontefract Castle was the last royalist fortress to surrender, but was ordered to be demolished by Oliver Cromwell following Charles I's execution. Notably, many famous prisoners were kept at the castle, including Richard II, James I of Scotland, and Charles, the Duke of Orleans. The castle now holds but a shadow of its former glory, with only remnants of the original walls, chapel, and great hall. However, visitors can explore the castle's underground dungeons and cellars, and view the writing and names scratched onto the walls by prisoners. Excavations have also unearthed many English Civil War items that are housed at the Pontefract Museum. The Catacomb of Priscilla, located in Rome, Italy, is an ancient burial site that was originally a quarry in Roman times. It became a Christian burial site in the late 2nd century, and was used until the 4th century. 
According to legend, the catacomb is named after the wife of Consul Manius Acilius Glabrio, who converted to Christianity and was killed on the orders of Domitian. The catacomb of Priscilla is divided into three areas, an arenarium, a cryptoporticus from a large Roman villa, and the underground burial area of the Acilius Glabrio family. The catacomb is adorned with beautiful wall paintings, including images of saints and early Christian symbols. Notable among them is the Greek chapel, a square chamber with an arch that contains 3rd century frescoes depicting Old and New Testament scenes. The catacomb also contains what may be the oldest known Marian paintings, including an image of Mary with Jesus on her lap, dating back to the early 3rd century. Several early popes and many martyrs were buried in the catacomb of Priscilla, gaining it the nickname Queen of the Catacombs in Antiquity. Specifically, the catacomb contains the tombs of two popes, Pope Marcellinus and Pope Marcellus I, although the alleged relics of many other popes have also been found here. Back to England again, where Canterbury Cathedral's tiny yet precious sundial was discovered during an excavation in the Great Cloister back in 1938. Measuring just a little over two inches, the sundial is made of silver with a gold cap, chain, and separate pin. The intricately designed cap is decorated with interlacing and has a beast's head on the end. Similarly, the chain and pin have beast's heads, two of which still have gems for eyes. The sundial is adorned with abbreviated Latin month names inscribed in pairs and three lines on both sides of the tablet. There are also inscriptions on the sides that read, Health to the Maker, Peace to the Owner. Crafted in the 10th century, this sundial is an exquisite piece of art. By using the sun's altitude, the sundial could estimate three different times of day, which were likely used to indicate prayer times as part of the divine office. This rare relic from the Anglo-Saxon era has an unknown maker and original owner, although it is often associated with St. Dunstan, an archbishop of Canterbury and patron saint of goldsmiths and silversmiths, who was also known to be a skilled musician, scribe, and metalworker. The hardest thing to comprehend when you're looking at images of Longmen grottoes in Luoyang, China, is that every single one of the tiny black holes on the side of the cliff is a cave, and each of those caves is a tiny independent Buddhist temple. If it wasn't for the enormous Buddha sculpture that sits at the heart of the grottoes, you could be forgiven for thinking that the entire site was created by human-sized termites. The work of carving out the grottoes happened over the course of several hundred years, but most historians agree that the bulk of it was carried out between the 6th and 7th centuries, starting during the time of China's Tang Dynasty. Owning a small temple in the side of the rock became something of a status symbol, and so wealthy nobles and high-ranking military officers spent their money commissioning their own little niche in the limestone, and then furnishing it with statues. It's thought that more than 100,000 religious carvings existed at the site if you added all the contents of all the caves together. Many were stolen and looted in the years since their construction, but these days the grottoes are protected as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so no further lootings are likely. There are times when an archaeological artifact may turn out to be considerably more valuable than it was thought to be when it was discovered after a thorough examination. That was the case with the Eskrik Ring, which was discovered in 2009 by an amateur metal detectorist in York, England, but was reevaluated as a discovery in 2013 after further research. The Golden Sapphire Ring has always had intrinsic worth due to the materials it was made of, but a new analysis has found that it goes back to the 5th century rather than the 11th century as was previously assumed, and that it may have even belonged to a European king. When the Yorkshire Museum originally examined it shortly after its discovery, they determined that it belonged to a bishop, but it's now thought that the jewelry's heavily French-influenced design makes it more likely that it belonged to a royal hand. There's still more work to be done before the original owner of the ring can be determined, but if the theory is verified, the piece's worth will likely skyrocket far beyond the $50,000 paid by the museum. 
Diamond miners draining a salt lake in the Namibian desert accidentally solved a 500-year-old mystery when they found the wreck of the legendary Portuguese trading vessel Bom Jesus. The ship was well buried beneath the sand, sitting on a site where a human-made lagoon once existed. The Bom Jesus was a well-known trading ship during its time and was making its way from its home port in Lisbon to India when it disappeared in 1533. Now we know where it spent the next five centuries, with all of its treasures still on board. Old and precious gold and silver coins have been found inside the ship's treasure chest, mostly well preserved by the salt and the sand. West African ivory and German weaponry were also still within the hold. Experts believe that it sank because it was simply carrying too heavy a cargo. It's believed that the total cash value of the treasure find is more than $13 million, which is good news for Namibia. The Portuguese have waived their claim on the vessel, allowing the country to do as it pleases with it. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.